What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're gonna finish up our to-do list app with Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna finish up our to-do list app, but before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up with the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is Christmas Eve, so hope you're enjoying yourself today. If you're stuck at work like I am here, uh, <laughs> hopefully you can make the best of it. But uh, Merry Christmas, if I don't get a chance to see you tomorrow, we probably will have a video tomorrow, but you never know, uh, <laughs> so we'll see. Okay, so in this video, we wanna finish up our to-do list app. So we wanna create this menu up here so we can save our list, open our list, clear the list. We may move some of these buttons up here to another list too, we'll see how it goes. And uh, so that's cool. So. First things first, somebody mentioned in the comment section below the last video that there was a little bit of an error in the, let's see, let's come down here, cross off item list when we delete crossed off items. And let me just run this real quick and show you. So python to do.py. So if we come over here and we cross off an item here and then we cross off another item right away and then delete the crossed off, it only crosses off one of them. So good catch in the comment section. And it's really easy to fix this. We just have to put our count here in an else statement. I should have caught this when we did this, but I missed it. And so that should do the trick. Let's go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that worked. So we can take an app, cross that off, learn Kinter, cross that off, delete items, boom, now it takes care of both of them. We can cross off one item, boom, it takes care of that. So, okay, piece of cake. And let's run this again really quickly. And let's make this entry box while I'm looking at this a little bit bigger doesn't quite stretch all the way across. So we might as well knock that out real quick. So let's head up to our entry box. And I'm just gonna give this a width of like, I don't know, 24 or so. That should probably do the trick. Let's run this again, just see. Okay, so that looks a lot better. It stretches off. There's a little bit of a padding alongside of here. We might wanna make it a little bit bigger, maybe 26. I don't know, play around with this. Okay, that looks pretty good. We'll just leave it like that. So now let's go ahead and create our menu up here at the top. And we've done menus lots of times throughout this playlist. So this should be sort of old hat by now. Let's create menu. So I'm gonna call this my underscore menu. And that's gonna be a menu. We wanna put it in root. And then let's go root.config and set our menu to my underscore menu. Now let's add items to the menu. So I'm gonna create one called file underscore menu. So we're gonna do file stuff, open files, close files. So I'll just call it file menu, kind of makes sense to me. This is gonna be a menu item and we wanna put this in my underscore menu. And let's give this a tear off of false. So those little dots aren't above it. If you remember, we've had those little dots uh, on the menu before, we don't really like that. So, okay, now let's go my underscore menu dot add underscore cascade to add an item to the menu. And let's give this a label equals. And remember, this is a lowercase l. I know it kind of looks like a capital L, but that's definitely lowercase. And so let's call this file. And let's give this a menu of file underscore menu, which is just this guy right here. So now let's add drop down items. And we wanna do two or three of these. And I'm gonna start out with file underscore menu dot add underscore command. And let's add a label. Again, this is lowercase, lowercase L and label. And let's call this one save list. And give this a command equal save underscore list, which we haven't created yet. We'll do that in just a second. And let me just copy this a few more times. And for this one, we'll call, we'll call this one open list. And we'll call this one clear list. And here for the command, let's call this open list. And here we'll call this, I don't know, delete list or maybe clear list or something like that. Now in between this, we wanna add a little separator just cause clearing the list is a little bit different than opening and closing a file. So let's add some separation in the menu itself. We could do that with file underscore menu dot add underscore separator. Spell that right, separator, okay. All right, so now we need these three functions. So let's just create these really quickly. Come up to our function section here, and I'll call this one save list. 
And let me just sort of copy this and paste it a couple more times. And this one was open list. And this one was, I think, what, delete list. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it, make sure that looks good. So Python to do.py. And you can see now we have this file up here, save list, open list, and clear list. And uh, okay, so, so now let's knock off this delete list first. This is probably the easiest one. So what we wanna do is just clear all the items from our list. Now this is a list box. So we already know how to clear items from a list box. We just call the list box, my underscore list, dot delete. And we wanna delete everything in our list from zero to end. So we'll just go ahead and save this and run it just to make sure that's working here. So we can go clear list, boom, we're good to go. So, okay, that one was easy. So now let's look at saving the file and opening the file. Let's do the save file first, because you know we need to save a file before we can open it. Now, we could do this manually. You know, a couple of videos ago, I talked about using dat files, and we're gonna use a dat file for this. And we could hard code it in here. We could just say every time save it to the file list.dat, and it would just save it. And then we can open that file list.dat every time. But that's kind of boring. We want a pop-up box to come up, a file dialog box, that we can then pick whatever name we want to save it as. And then when we open it, we want that same file dialog box to pop up so we can choose which list we want to open. That sort of makes more sense. So to do that, we need to come up to the top here and we need to import. So let's go from a tkinter, import file dialog. And we've used file dialogs hundreds of times, it seems like, in this playlist. Check the link in the comment section below for the playlist if you want to learn more about file dialog boxes. But this should be old hat for us by now. We've done this so many times. So let's come down here and let's create a variable. I'm gonna call it, I'm gonna call it file name. And let's set that equal to a file dialog. Now we're saving this, so we need ask save as file name. Now we can set, let me put this on its own line here so we can read this easier. We can set the initial dir. Say, where do we want this to look? And I want this to start looking in C forward slash GUI, this is our directory, forward slash data. And that's just the same directory, our GUI directory where this file is located. I'm gonna create a, a folder called data just so we can save stuff in it. And if we don't have that file already, we can come over here and just inside this directory say mkdir data, All right? But I think I've already done that. Yeah, so we're good to go there, but you would likely have to do that. And now let's give this little box a title and we could say, uh, save file, whatever. Now we need to tell it the file types to look for. And so we put a couple of brackets here, right? And inside of here, I wanna say dat files, because we're gonna use dat files. And dat files have the extension of, let's say, star dot dat, right? And if we wanted to, we could also say all files, just for fun. And this is gonna be star dot star. Oops, there we go. Okay, so that looks good. And again, we could put this on separate lines if it's sort of easier to read, right? Okay, so this will open up the file dialog box and it will let us pick a file we wanna save or type it in ourselves. And it'll assign that to this file name. So now we wanna say if file underscore name, because we could open that box and then click cancel. So then there wouldn't be a file name and then there would be all kinds of errors. So we need to make sure we actually selected a file name. So if file name. So when we save file names as dot dat, we could save them as dot dat files or uh, files that don't even have an extension. That's kind of a fun thing about dot dat files. So we need to make sure the file we selected has a dot dat at the end of it or doesn't. So to do that, we can do a quick if statement. So let's go if file name dot ends with, and then we could call it just dot dat. If that is the case, we don't want to do anything else. Let's go file name equals, and let's create a quick F string. And inside of here, I'm going to go file underscore name and then dot dat. So if the file we save doesn't have a dot dat extension, but it's still a dat file, we need to right now put dot dat on it because when we open that file, we need to know that it has a dot dat on it, right? At the end of it. So, okay, a little weird. Okay, so 
to save our file, if we may have crossed off some items from our list, we don't want to save those items to the DAT file because it's going to be really hard for us to tell that they've been crossed off once we save them to a, a DAT file, right? So instead, what I want to do is delete all the items that were in our list already before we save it. So we could come down, let's see, let's come up to our delete cross, and I'm just going to copy all of this. And we could just sort of paste this in and make sure you're indented correctly. There we go. So this is basically saying, hey, if the item is light gray, go ahead and delete it from the list. And we have our increment our count thing. Okay, so uh, let's comment here just so this makes more sense. Uh, delete crossed off items before saving. Okay, so that's a piece of cake. So now let's grab all the stuff from the list, right? So I'm just gonna call this stuff, right? And this is my underscore list dot get, we wanna get from zero to end, everything in our list and assign it to the variable stuff. Now we probably don't need to do this, but sort of make it easier. So now let's open the file that we've selected, right? So let's call this output underscore file. And this is gonna be open and then we want to call file underscore name, which is this thing we just got up here, right? The thing that we got from the file dialog box. So we want to open that and we want to open it for WB. If you don't know what that means, go back and watch the video on saving to DAT files two or three videos ago in the playlist. I explain all that there. So basically it means write to binary, right? Now we need to actually add the stuff to the file. Here we just open the file. Now we need to add the stuff to the file. And we do that using pickle. So pickle.dump. And then we want to add the stuff. What do we want to add it to? We want to add it to the output underscore file. So this is the output file we just opened. Stuff is all of our stuff in our text box, in our to-do list. And now we need pickle. We didn't, we didn't import that. So we can come up here and go import. Pickle. And Pickle comes with Python. We don't have to pip install this. It's already there, but we just need to import it. So, okay, that should work. Let's go ahead and save this. And let's give this a quick run to see if it worked. We've got our list. Let's go file, save list. This thing pops up. We can call this list. If we save it, I can pull up a file explorer here and we can see in our GUI data directory, now we have this list.dat file. So, okay, seems to have worked. So now we just need the thing to open our list. So let's come down here to our open list. And again, we need to call a file name and set that equal to a file dialog. But this time it's ask open file name. And let's come up here and just kind of copy all of this stuff. All right? We don't need to copy this or we don't need to do all this again. Uh, let's call this open file instead of save file. Okay, so that will grab the file name itself. So let's go if file name again. So if we've selected something to open, right? First thing we wanna do is delete anything that's currently on our list. So if we've already got a list open, we need to clear that thing. So let's go my underscore list dot delete. We wanna delete from zero to end. And let me just comment delete currently open list if there is one. Now let's open the file. Okay, so let's call input file. Any variable name will work, but we'll call this input file. We want to open this file. We want to open file underscore name, which is the name we grabbed up here, right? And what do we want to, how do we want to open it? We want to open it as RB. This means read binary, right? Okay, so now let's load the data from the file. And I'm, again, just going to call it stuff, right? And let's set that equal to pickle.load. And we want to load the stuff from this input file and then assign it to this variable. So now all we have to do is output stuff to the screen, all right? So let's loop through here. So let's go for item in stuff. What do we want to do? We want to put it in my underscore list dot insert we want to insert it at the end of the list and what do we want to insert the item All right so that should do the trick let's go ahead and save this and run it 
So we saved this list earlier. So let me just go ahead and clear it. Now let's open this list again. So we get this pop up box. It says open file here. We can click this, click open, boom, it we're good to go. So, so okay, that looks pretty good. Now, uh, what else do we have here? We've got some other items here, you could put these buttons up here in another menu if you wanted to, I don't think we're going to do that. I could leave that to you if you really want to do it. We may want to get rid of all of this stuff. So when the program first starts, right? Boom, all of this stuff is here. This is just dummy data that we used while we were creating the app, you would probably want to remove all that. So we could head back over here to our code. And let's see, boy, way up here at the top somewhere, right? Uh, we create this stuff stuff. We could comment this out and comment this out. Now, if we save this and run it, we get a blank list and we can, you know, walk the dog, add item, take a nap, add item. I don't know why I'm exclaiming after each one. So if we save this list and I'm going to call this uh, Christmas, underscore Eve. It's my list for today. Now we can close this thing, run it again, open this some other time. And when we do, we can go, hey, let's open our list. What are we doing on Christmas Eve? I don't know. Let's see. We're walking the dog and taking a nap. Very cool. Uh, let's see. Cross this item off. Delete crossed. Very cool. Cross it off. Uncross it again. And we're good to go. So I think we're going to call this one done a simple little app, but you know, there's some cool moving parts to this that were kind of interesting using the dat files with the file dialog box. We haven't done that before crossing things off a list. We haven't really done that before deleting crossed items from a list. That's pretty interesting. You might need to do that. Uh, if you're going to use a list box, certainly probably would do that and uh, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 on membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.